or purple? Blue? It's on our website. It's, I, I, I'll get you the hats. How's everybody doing? While we're waiting, highlight so far? Throw a couple out. Highlight of the summit? Highlight of Accelerate? You want to throw one out? That's my Canadian you just heard. T Tony Rodoni's section was interesting. That was really, really cool. Tony's a rock star. I worked with Tony for a long time. What was great about Tony's? It's a, you got to shift. I mean, the salesperson today is different than the salesperson yesterday. And you've got to be able to adapt. I mean, the, the notion how he, he talked about every salesperson has to be a minor. In we science. haven't started yet. We're just kind of doing a little. Every salesperson has to be a minor in science and knows how to use a spreadsheet and look at data. Like what got you there traditionally may not get you there today or tomorrow. And so you, you got you to gotta change. That's there what I go. got from That's it. That's what you got. Amazing. All right. Are we at top of the hour yet, folks? Time check. Ready? Three, two, one. Two minutes? Am I getting the official, let's wait. We'll wait one minute. How's that? We'll get an extra two. You know, let's get started. So, so good afternoon and uh, welcome. Come on in. We're just getting started. My name is Eli Cohen, and I'm sharing the, uh, the spot here with uh, Steve Goldberg, a colleague of mine. We've worked together for a long time. Just to kind of level set, what we're going to talk about today over the next 30 minutes is something near and dear to my heart. It's all about knowledge sharing, specifically onboarding, training, best practice sharing, and, and some best practices that Inside Sales is executing. And we're going to give you some ideas for you to think about today, some things that you can walk away today from and start executing in your business. And uh, so we're, we're extremely lucky to have Steve share, share his story, and I'll tell you why in a second. Just briefly, just who are we? So, so my name is Eli, and you know, CEO of Saleshood. We're a partner a uh, strategic partner of Inside Sales. We do a lot of, uh, a lot of work together, Inside Sales. Uh, we help Inside Sales, as you're going to see, with their onboarding, with, with a lot of the things they need to help their sales teams be successful. And we're going to give you a ton of examples. I worked at Salesforce.com for about eight years, SVP, sales productivity. I want you to kind of go back in time, and I want you to imagine 2005, when the company was sitting at about three or $400 million in run rate, and I want you to imagine that time all the way till about $3 billion in run rate. I want you to imagine that there were about 7,500 customer-facing sales and, and, and customer success folks that were onboarded, trained, and certified. I want you to imagine that we were running boot camps of about 50 people a month, uh, that we were doing quarterly, sometimes twice a year, certifications, and, and that we had developed a machine. And, and so I was responsible for leading that, and uh, it was a lot, of, a lot of flights, a lot of time uh, around the world. We had a lot of people. We had a lot of coaches. We had a lot of people on the ground. And so that was my background, and I left Salesforce to start Saleshood specifically because I wanted to solve that problem in a new way. So today is a little bit about some really cool, innovative ways to rethink your assumptions on onboarding and training with some, some examples of, of, uh, of inside sales, which allows me to introduce Steve. Your, your mic's on, right? Yep. And, and so I'll just do a quick. Steve and I worked together for a long time. He'd been on stage a whole bunch of times over the years for you know, amazing execution of, of customer success and, and, and deals that he'd worked on over the years. And, uh, and, you know, we watch each other grow professionally. And so together now, you know, we're in a partnership where we're helping him drive success with his team. So uh, we're fortunate to have Steve here. So why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, so Steve Goldberg. I was at Salesforce, worked a lot with Eli. Um, I manage the West at Inside Sales, responsible for the EBU. And uh, Eli is selling himself short, for, short a little bit. I mean, every single person that went through that in the transformation at Salesforce, touched, Eli touched. So he drove that whole sales enablement transformation at Salesforce, and he's taking all of his domain expertise, and he's integrated into these processes he's going to show. And it's, it's so important around helping a first-line manager, helping everybody get on point, and he's going to show it to you today. And we've incorporated it through our business, through our onboarding, through our constant education. It's, uh, it's really been super valuable. So it's great. You know, there's, there's times when you are talking about a process, you know, in theory, and there are times that you talk about a process and maybe there's a, a product there to kind of show what it would look like in a hypothetical scenario. But in this scenario, 
we have a problem, we have a process, we have a solution, but the most important element is we have someone who's actually driving it in his business. So we're going to hear directly from Steve how he's using kind of some of this innovation uh, that we're going to talk about in a second. And so modernizing knowledge sharing, you know, what does that mean? What does it mean to me? What does it mean to my mission? It is, it is about revenue, right? You know, yes, there are ways to use technology to reduce costs, but if you're not building an onboarding program and if you're not building a training program, if you're not building communications and if you're not building a system that's going to help your salespeople be more successful, if it's not focused specifically on generating pipeline and generating revenue or improving win rates, then there's something wrong with, with the program. And, and so I just wanted a level set, right? So, so saleshood and, and, and all the work we do together is all about pipeline, 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 and, and closing business. So modernizing knowledge sharing you know, to grow revenue faster. And just the pains, I just want you to feel the pain for a moment. Like, how many of you have sat through, you know, a week-long training in Vegas? Just raise your hand for, for a kickoff event. Like, most of you. You know, how much do you remember at the end of that week? You know, let's not talk about, you know, the hangover. Let's just talk about, like, how much do you actually retain? Right? It's, it's very low. And you know what? Depending on who you talk to, you know, you retain maybe 10% of it, 5% of it. You know, most of the time, you know, a few weeks later, the bigger issue is you really haven't done any behavioral changes. You really haven't shifted the culture. You've, you've used these events, you've used training as a way to align, as a way to energize, but then you're kind of left there saying, then what? And, and so there's a big gap in the market around reinforcement, reinforcement coaching, reinforcement learning that has material return on investment, as Steve's going to share in his story as he talks about it. So... Um, you know, this, this picture is kind of funny, you know, it's, it's hopefully none of you fall asleep right now, but, uh, you know, there's only so much time the brain can take sitting and consuming knowledge on a regular basis. So there's got to be, you know, innovative, more, more efficient ways to do this. And, you know, the mobile device, you know, technology is like, like forget product, just using the mobile device. I want you to imagine how we're consuming content today, right? How are we consuming content? We, you know, we're watching movies on our phones. We're, we're reviewing documents on our phones. You know, we're, we're, we're liking things on our phones. We're, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're, we're doing all this stuff on our phones. But as sales professionals, we really haven't shifted there quite yet. And, and you know, yes, there's great work happening with Salesforce One and Microsoft Dynamics and all that goodness. But how do I get access to the greatest information, the best practices, the knowledge that's resonant inside of the hearts and minds of sales teams, right? And so the idea is to start being very uh, prescriptive with, with content, right? So if you have a new hire and you have someone that starts on their first day, what we want you to do is what do they need in their first week? What do they need in their first month? So start mapping, start thinking about how you can start mapping your programs specifically to the role and specifically to how salespeople you know, what they need. You know, the idea of practicing is something that, you know, I don't know how many of you, um, I guess the different question is, uh, I spoke to Tony Rodoni, and, and, you know, he's like, you know, we were talking specifically about practice. And he said, you know, I, I practiced about 10 times, right? And he goes, I wonder what would happen if we practiced that much for every one of our customer calls or every one of our customer presentations. So practice becomes a key part of training and onboarding, but we're not doing enough of it. And, and, and so, you know, there's a way to use this mobile device to start driving training and onboarding in a much more mobile video, you know, social way. And I'm, I'm going to show you some examples. So, you know, we're fortunate to have a few companies, and, and most of them are our inside sales customers. We're happy to have a few companies that have embraced this way of using video and mobile and social to accelerate revenue by knowledge sharing in a more effective way. And we've done great work with inside sales. So I'm going to focus specifically on inside sales right now and talk about the enterprise team, right? So, so the history here goes, uh, David Brunitsky, who is you know, the author of the $5 billion playbook mentioned in Mark Benioff's book, he started at inside sales about you know, 10 months ago. Yeah, just over a year. Just over a year ago. And what he needed was a system to quickly onboard and, and enable all of his teams. So he kind of started using technology because his team was distributed. So these are very seasoned sales executives that need a fast way to get the latest, greatest information, share knowledge with each other, and grow together, right? So that's, that's kind of the core profile of the folks that we're going to talk about. I would about. add to that. I mean, there's no way to do that 
because everybody's remote. You can't do it through conference calls, from video calls. You have to, and, and we, our challenge was, is what was our message gonna be? We were a company primarily focused on small businesses trying to go into the enterprise space with a very different message. And so how are we gonna get our team on point? How are we gonna get everybody positioning the product the right way? That, that was our, our biggest, and we were onboarding, we onboarded 24 people, that's just salespeople, and then a number of sales engineer, engineers and the support staff, and we were figuring, how were we gonna do that quickly? Because we had, obviously we had revenue goals that we had uh, to meet as so well. So just curious, how many people are going to club? So this year, there's the most we've ever had, there's 60 people attending club, and, and this time last year, we were talking about this, is it was four of us, it was me, Dave Vernitsky, Morgan Burke, and Joe Williams sitting in a room, and how are we gonna do this? And we had our sales kickoff here uh, on Tuesday, and there were 60 people in the room. And it's just, so, but we had a challenge. Now we have another challenge is, how do we stay consistent with that, and how do we drive that to the next 30 people we're hiring? And then how do we recycle that and go back to the people we just hired and keep them on, on point? And so it, it was a major challenge that we had. And you know, kudos to your team. You guys have done great. This is, so, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, we're going to talk specifically about four strategies that they employed on the training and onboarding side of the business. Number one, messaging alignment. You know, so there's very, very regimented, rigorous focus on messaging alignment, which means think about what Dave Elkington talked about on stage. Think about what Mick talked about. Think about how they're talking about the company. Well, how do you get everybody at Inside Sales to be on message and to talk in the exact same way? We're going to show you how the teams do it. We're going to give you a specific example. We even have a video, and some of you in the room are in the video. It's going to be kind of fun. And, and so number one. Number two, build a very structured and sequenced, organized onboarding program. You know, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's critical to, we're going to show that to you and show you exactly how they do it. Do deal coaching to leverage quarterly business reviews in a way that is more coaching versus kind of a punitive, like, what have you done for me lately? And, and you were great at it, and yeah. we're going to dive into it. So one of the things that we did was we saw how well this worked when we were onboarding our, our reps and how we can get them on point. So what, what we did with the, the, our QBRs was everybody goes to QBRs and puts a presentation together and then they goes back into their files and they doesn't come back to the next QBR. And so we didn't want to do that. And so what, what we wanted to do is figure out, you know, we, we were starting to understand the sales motion and get some muscle memory around how we actually need to sell, like our process. So what we did was we incorporated the questions in each of the, into the sales process that we need to know. And we knew that when we got to a certain point, the likelihood of close was, was really good versus if we couldn't get to that point. So we incorporated that into this process. And before the QBR, every one of the, the AEs went through this and had to fill it out for every account, and they had to do three accounts. And then we, we reviewed those at the, uh, at the QBR, and then all that was integrated into Salesforce. So all the data was now sitting in the opportunity in Salesforce so everybody could see it. So messaging alignment, training and onboarding, deal coaching, and, and you know, you've really embraced the quarterly business review process, and we're going to show you what that looks like, and then playbooks. So these, you know, there are a lot of other initiatives that Inside Sales did to enable the sales organization, but as we looked and reflected on kind of the last year, and these were the four that we agreed, you know, let's, let's kind of share these stories because they're, 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 they're kind of fun and they're, and they're interesting. So we're going to go one by one. We're going to share with you four stories. We're going to make it interactive. And, and so, so first of all, you know, how do you get 150, 200 people on message fast? Well, first you need to have a message. Then what you need to do is you need to distribute out the messages to everyone, ideally you know, in, in a video fashion, but we did something really innovative. Normally when companies, when they do a messaging certification, it tends to be a big certification. It's like, you know, 30 slides. You know, I remember when we used to do it at Salesforce, you know, Mark would pull us in and he'd hand over 80 slides and say, I want everyone certified. And we'd say, well, that's a little much. And, and we would negotiate the number of slides. So now I've taken it to the other extreme, right? Sitting down with Mick. Now it's interesting here, think about it, Mick, and I, along with Dave Ronitsky and the leadership team, we sat down and we developed a strategy together for messaging certification, which means the importance of marketing, sitting at the table, being a part of the process, it made this whole thing work. It meant that marketing had, a, had skin in the game, and they then recorded kind of four, five-minute messages. Company overview, wheel of fortune, neurolytics, and um, the VPE stands for um, productivity, uh, uh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just, you know, 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, everyone in the room. Okay, so what happened was we rolled it out. And, and in a very short period of time, you know, the organization made their way through it and, and, and certified. Now, what happens when you are living in a world where you're making these videos available to people, you know, they are able to watch it on their own time, then everybody records their version. Now, think about this for a second. Everybody records their version of the video. Uh, and then when they record it the first time, what happens? They hit play and they rewatch it and they go, huh, I can do better. They record a second one. And then maybe they record a third one. And you know what? You go back to your offices and you say, we're going to certify everyone. We're going to do these five-minute certifications. It's going to be great. And here's what your organization is going to say. No way. We're not going to do it. I promise you there's going to be a collective sigh in your organization and they're going to say worse things than no way. And And... Go ahead. It's, it's interesting how that happens because there's – so say you have a sales team and you, you know on your sales team there's going to be certain people that will embrace it and certain people just like, I'm not going to do this. And so when, when we did this, we, uh, you, you actually – as you start to do it, you actually start to, to see yourself to Eli's point. We saw an average of three or four times each person was doing it. And the people that were the naysayers, they were the ones that actually kind of embraced it more because it's not just doing the video. You, what you have to do is there's a process around that because when you do the video, people can watch the video and they can grade the video, and they can continue to do that. So you want to make sure you put that process in place so people are learning from each other. And it's interesting coming to a place like this because we use this. We incorporate this into our business. So I'll be just walking around the halls, and hmm. somebody will stop me and say, Wait, I remember you. I saw this. Or I'll see somebody else and say the same thing. And everybody has picked up one or two things, just those one or two things you pick up when you actually do watch the videos of everybody else. That's the thing. You know, when, when we used to do it manually, we read the survey results, and oh, I really love the way Steve, you know, kind of, close out his presentation. I really love the way, you know, Frame, what he did was he did a great opening. I really love the way Susan kind of transitioned from story to solution. Whatever it is, you pick up one or two things and it makes you better. The other thing I want you to comment on is as a coaching tool, right? So when your team is recording their pitches and then they upload them and then you get notified, then what are you doing? I mean, you, you go in there and you actually, you got to use it as a, a coaching mechanism and you you... You talk through it, you actually watch it with them, and, and you, you talk specifically about it, and then you point them to other people that like certain points that you should watch this video, or we do our account reviews on here. You should watch what this person did. So everybody's kind of learning from each other, and as a sales rep, especially remote, you don't get that communication with the other reps. You may talk to them on the phone. You don't get to go to meetings with them. And so by seeing this, you see kind of everybody's style, and then you make it your own. And so that, that's uh, the value of a lot of it. And it was, it was the naysayers. The ones that didn't want to do this were the ones that were actually watching the videos more than, than others and, and the ones that seemed to get a lot out of it. So we did something fun. We took some snippets from some of the top-reviewed presentations. We created a quick 60-second short video, and uh, we didn't test the audio. Now we did. <laughs> I love it. So let's let, – fingers crossed. Sorry, we didn't test it, but we're going to hit play. And so, again – these are all recorded on mobile devices. These are peer-reviewed, stack-ranked, and then just pieced together and, uh, and becomes a really good educational tool. So listen for the message as you, as you watch it. I'm going to hit play. Fingers crossed. Here we go. Peace. So there are a couple things you see in that presentation. So first, the voice is, is consistent and it's, and it's coherent. Um, and think about a couple things you see. The other thing that I, I, I love in this is the authenticity of it. 
It's real. People are doing it from their homes. They're taking it seriously. Yeah, there are a couple of times you see the eyes of someone's reading, but that's okay. They're trying. They're making themselves better. What, do you, what did you see? Well, another thing you notice when you do it is when you're presenting in, in this, you start to realize there's certain habits you have that you don't realize you have. And when you do something like this, you see like my, your eyes are moving all over the place. It looks like you're not really engaged with the person on the other side. And, and you, you pick a lot up when you actually watch yourself and then when you watch other people. And you really get to your point, like little snippets of how somebody's positioning something or it's something you didn't think about. And, and then w what we do, actually, we use this kind of like, like I don't want to say like Facebook, but it's on your phone. So you could be sitting in an airport or out in a hallway and just watch really quick before a meeting. Hey, well, I want to watch this one again. Pick it up, watch it, make, maybe make a comment. And then it's, it's always at your fingertips, which is nice. And you just kind of scroll through the different videos. And so the data shows this when, when, when the pitches are five minutes or less. So we all love data, especially here. When the pitches, when the presentations that you're asking, the accreditations, think about these words, kind of they mean different things. So let's just list a bunch of them. Certification, accreditation, stand and deliver, practice, assessment. You know, you can start progression testing, like whatever the word is that it was, is part of your culture and your business. If you can make the test that they're doing, the stand and deliver five minutes or less, 25 times each video is watched by peers and they're reviewed 10 times. So what that shows you is there's a general belief. Salespeople don't want to share. Salespeople don't want to learn from each other. But the data, and it's not just here at Insight Sales, right? We're working with DocuSign. We're working with Aptis. We're working with, you know, a lot of companies that have, you know, similar go-to-market. So I just encourage you, a couple takeaways on this. You know, work with marketing. Get the, get the messaging down to smaller bite-sized chunks. Map them to your go-to-market. Map them to your sales process. There's a lot of literature I've written on this you can find. And, and uh and, you know, it's, it's important to just do it, right? And just do one, see how it goes. It doesn't have to be perfect, and then do it again. And run these as often as you can. You know, Inside Sales ran, ran five of these in a two-month period. And, uh, and actually, when Jim Steele started 10, you know, 18 months ago, in his first week, he said, all right, elevator pitch time, let's do it. And, uh, and that was his first thing because he just said, let's just get on message together. I mean, that, that's so important. Is, I'm sure – You've all been in a meeting with someone on your team, and you're listening to someone present or talk about the product, and you're just like, "That's just that's just not that's just wrong. It's just not accurate." And um, and you all can see the customer on the other side just doesn't get it as well. So it's so important to get everyone on the same page with a message, at least with a core part of the message. And you kind of take that for granted. You just think, "All right, it's kind of." I think Tony was saying it this morning. You focus so much on the end of the funnel, but if you don't focus on these little things that happen, you don't get enough deals in the end of the funnel. Um. Can we just get through? Yeah, okay. So, so, so we got like ten minutes left, and and uh, and they're gonna they're gonna hold me to time. So, so the last piece here I'll, I'll make is, uh, you know, what we hear feedback wise is, uh, so you can do this in a number of ways. Right, you can take a team if you're small and just get in a room and just run drills and just keep doing it over and over and over until you're comfortable. Just have the discipline to do it. You can use something automated like, like Saleshood. Great, we're here for you. There are a lot of ways that you can get videos recorded. Uh, and, and I just want to encourage you, and my, my ask is just to do it. And, and don't say you're going to do it and don't do it. Just do it and just do it again because you are going to become addicted to it because it truly is remarkable, and it does help everyone learn from each other. And the results will show in. You know, you look at, you look at the results of the team. You know, their team... Uh, went through a pretty rigorous onboarding program, and here's what their onboarding looks like. Their team, you know, almost all your reps closed the deal in their first 30 days, which is material. You start thinking about hyper growth and growing fast. They generated, I'm going to share this as public information, tens of millions of dollars of pipeline by understanding the message, getting on message, and then prioritizing the importance of pipeline generation. So this is... This is your 30-day onboarding. It is. And, and the interesting parts here, it's not just the presentations. It's email messages. What is the right email? What are emails that you're sending out that are working and grading those? And, and how to send the right prospecting email? Um, what, how, what's the right way to write an email to a certain person? And, and it's, it's a lot of that that's in here that you also, it's not just looking at someone, how someone positions, but there's a lot of content in here that we use that's through every, pretty much every step of what a salesperson does. Think about what you see here. Welcome from Elkington. Mixed pitches. Uh, you can see a bunch of stories from customers and a bunch of deal wins from reps themselves. Who doesn't want to hear how you win deals in your first week in the job? That whole first bit, the intent there is pre-work. 
Like when you're on garden leave and you signed your offer, you get access, and you're like, you're getting already into the culture. You're already watching this stuff. You're getting into it. It's really, really, you know, really, really helpful. And, and, and you know what? Salespeople appreciate it. They appreciate the organization. And then you move into product. You know, and there are a lot of different ways to do product training. But notice, at the end of the first week, you're practicing your pitch. End of the second week, you're doing your pitch again. End of the third week, you're doing a demo. And then they've got a really cool way to kind of get, get certified at the end, which is to pick your most strategic account, and you record a five- to eight-minute account plan. Right? So you've gone through the messaging. You understand the buyer personas. You understand the product and the go-to-market. And then you're getting feedback from your peers. That's how you generate a pipeline real fast. Uh, and the other thing I'd add is not just don't just do the video. It's, when we were at Salesforce... We had this product that was really easy to use, and we'd, we'd compete with Siebel and put out it was much easier to use than Siebel, but, but we still were having adoption problems. People just, they were going to use it, and they were putting some information in there, but what's really important is that first-line manager, and it's adhering to a process and pushing a process down. So with this, it's not just go out and do the videos, but actually make sure you go in as a first-line manager, have your team go and actually grade them, make comments, give feedback, and drive that process, because that's when you'll get the most out of it. It's, a, it's a cohort. So as you add people in, they're going through this journey together. And uh, so there's detail here. You can give us a, there's an article written on this. It's published in a Salesforce book. You can go to my LinkedIn profile, onboarding, 30-day onboarding program, Inside Sales. There's a lot of detail there that you can find. We're available also to kind of answer questions. There's two more things I want to touch on. You know, the deal coaching that you alluded to, right? The, the deal coaching, specifically your QBR. You want to you wanna talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, we, we were really, it's not, so we talked about the message and getting on point, but it's how to sell your product. So what we found was that when a customer, and Salesforce can be talking about this later, when, they're, when they bought, when they said, okay, I'm convinced I'm buying your product, it's now they have to go through security and they've got to go through IT and they've got to go through the release management process, they've got to go through legal security. So what we were trying to do is kind of drive a process to show them not only how to get the customer to say yes, but to drive them down the whole selling process. So with the QBR, we built a set of questions that need to be asked and that you need to drive through that process, and, and, and we enforce that into the process. So when everybody went through that, everybody got to grade it, they looked at it, and other people got a lot of... So you actually did it before. The interesting thing is a lot of the times when you do quarterly business reviews, you're showing up, folks are standing up, they're presenting, everybody around the table, it's like Facebook or email, and, and you know it usually ends up becoming a manager and a rep conversation, and folks are kind of half listening. What he's instituted here is, no, 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 no. Everybody is going to you know, share their key account or key accounts before they show up, answer questions. Everybody is going to score it ahead of time, and then we're going to help each other with a winning strategy. So you got everybody bought into it from the very beginning. But the most important thing for you, from what I remember, from what you shared with me was you quickly, before you showed up, you knew what the blind spots were. Yeah, and, and so did everybody else. So everybody else was, when we started the meeting, Everybody was really collaborative in the deal because, and we had the rep just get up and whiteboard, what's going on? And everybody knew what was going on, so it wasn't foundational. It was like, here's what you're missing, here's why, how are we going to get over that obstacle together? And it really got the team to collaborate and communicate. So the idea of deal coaching comes in the form of QBRs, comes in the form of deal reviews, also comes in the form of salespeople recording their deal wins, right? It's, it's a tough thing. It's discipline, right? Deal closes, and, and then to get... Uh, Chris Cranus, who closed a public info, Google for work. And, uh, you know, he actually was in his car. He did pull over. And, and, but he, you know, what you do is you, you, you motivate, you inspire your teams to share these deal wins. Because if you think back to the onboarding, as much of these stories that you can capture, it becomes institutionalized into the business. So three months down the road when you hire someone new, you have these stories and you've got, and you've got the – the ability. Go ahead. The, the other one up here is the Ignite 50. So we have a program that we brought in, like an Ignite 50, so our top 50 accounts. And we had everybody put together t account reviews for that and record them on the on sales hood. So everybody looks at them, everybody grades them, and everybody. And we we actually uh, one of the things we learned about that is we thought they were the Ignite 50, but we realized that they may not they may not be. And so we had kind of changed and focused because of certain things. On, and we kind of transitioned really quick because of what we learned by putting that together. But it was really collaborative approach across everybody. So what you're seeing, and we're getting, we're getting close, and we'll, you know now we'll take some questions in about three minutes. What you're seeing is a thoughtful program mapped to go to market, tied to sales process, tied in with marketing with messaging alignment, thoughtful about the 30-day onboarding, branded. So the thing is, you know, kind of it's it's got the look and feel of inside sales, and the most important piece is owned by the first line manager. 
So he owns it. It's his program, and he's taking his team through it. That is kudos to you. No, that, that's, I mean, if you don't, you, people won't do it. Some people will. But you'll have the people that will do it, and you'll get that inconsistency with your, your team. But if you drive to that process, like on your team calls, a con consistency, consistency matters. So I want to show you one last thing, and, and, and what I want to show you is, so in addition to what we talked about, products, right? Product playbooks, it's a big problem. How do you roll up products? And there's some really cool ways to do it. One of the, one of the ways, so, so Inside Sales bought a company last year called C9. It's now HD Forecasting. So how do you quickly get a distributed sales force to understand the key messages and then to start practicing? The way you do it is you create this experience where the reps can talk about challenges, target personas, and you can see the layers across the top. And you know that everybody's watched it. And folks are sharing email templates. They're actually going to the field and starting to introduce to their customers this new thing. And, and, and the sales teams are coming together. And, and uh, so this was an initiative that Dave Runitsky ran with all of his teams. And... Uh, and it was great. I remember we ran those uh, last year, right? Yeah, I mean, it was it was extremely important because it was a it was a different sell than we were used to, and it was a different product, the way you, different customer you're selling to. So we had to very quickly simplify the message because it was somewhat complicated, and make sure everybody understood who to target, how to target, and what the message and positioning is. And uh, it was a it was a huge challenge, actually. So just to show you one thing, I actually found this really cool feature that if you've got a Mac, you can do QuickTime VR and you can show your mobile uh, directly right here. But what I really want to show you is, uh, let me just kind of get this. So here's, I just wanted you to see the power of what Steve has. So Steve can log, this is his, so everything that you saw on those screens is available on his mobile. And so I can go in, I can look at the pitches. And so here I am on my mobile device. I can go look at the leaderboard so here's a leaderboard of all the leaders, and I'm going to go look at Scott Mark, who's sitting right here. This was his elevator pitch. Did. But look at, the, look at the stats. Just take a moment. This isn't like you can make a salesperson record a pitch, record a customer story, record a customer presentation. You, yeah, you must do it. We're not going to pay you. But can you make folks view this that many times? 77 views, you know, 18 comments. That just happens because people want to do it because they want to learn, because they're curious, because they're sitting around, they got time, and they can just look at it. And so if I go look at Scott's presentation, and uh, you know, this is, this is how easy. Where were you, by the way? You actually were in your bathroom, yes. Uh, very clear and concise. I'm a little disturbed by the ending. <laughs> now, you know, there's the way, listen, what you've done here is, is this forever is remembered as the, one of the top pitches, and it was a great you know, you listen to it as fabulous. You know, you kind of made it a little fun, but it, it, it's culture building. And, and this, is how you, this is how you share best practices. Not necessarily sitting in a bathroom, but, uh, <laughs> but you get it, right? So, so I wanted to show you kind of what the experience can be like for your organization. So I'm going to get out of product, get back into uh, my Google here. Not that. Uh-oh. And, well, you know, I think I might have lost my... Uh, my ability. Give me two seconds. Window. Uh, so just a final tips, right? And then we'll take questions. So, so these are my thoughts. We, you and I didn't sync on this. But I think, yes, I've been talking a lot about peer-to-peer. -peer. Yes, I've been talking a lot about the importance of kind of tribal knowledge sharing across teams, how important that is, how that's going to grow revenue. But it starts with a vision. It starts with a mix saying, this is important. We've got to get everyone a message. It starts with the Jim Steele that says, this is important. It starts with the Dave Elkington that says, we've got to get everyone a message. You need that anchor. And then you can drive that. And then the thing will always go viral. If you create a space for your teams to talk to each other, to share their knowledge, to share their best practices, they will go there. They will do it. Whatever tool you end up using, you know, map out messaging videos. Think about your messages. It's not a big message. These are micro conversations that are happening across your, across your uh, sales process. I think make it fun. Like, you know, I want to like, flip through it on my video. Like you said, it's like do it in your bathroom. Do it in your bathroom. Well, nothing make like you should see some of the other videos. Like there are some other crazy ones. Crowdsource best practices. And then you know what? Just rinse and repeat. So that's the formal piece. Anything you want to wrap with before we take questions? I, I just think that that's all really important. But everybody's in sales are competitive and and. You wanted to come down top, but it's really, you know, there's, this is a true differentiator. It was a true differentiator for us, and just in my region, that it was consistent, it worked, it, and when it works, you do it.
right? So that so we we, we definitely so, got it. So what's next? We actually we actually uh, so I, I I just flew in last night. The team had an amazing kickoff event. They spent a day, day and a half with amazing, intensive uh, learning and videos and best practice sharing. So what are they going to do? Take all that content, break it up into small pieces, sequence it out across a three, six, uh, a 30, 60, 90 day program and start reinforcing the learnings from this week over an extended period of time. So that's it. Frame, wanna, I know you had a question. We want to open this up for any of you. Um, what are you thinking? What questions you got? Over there in the back, Sean. So, Sean, you want to introduce yourself to the team? You're a key member of executing all this. Sean, thanks for your continued partnership. He was the uh, the anchor that drove the messaging certification in the last 90 days, so kudos. Was Steve, Steve Frame, another enablement uh, uh, a leader over at uh, at Inside Sales. Boom. Obama style. Just, uh, you know, you've got, you've got, uh, what happens is when you start, listen, you know, you're going to start and, and, and there are going to be some, some really rough ones. Uh, then they're going to get a little better. Uh, and then you're going to have some wow ones that show up on the end and then you'll do it again. And you're going to so it takes time. Like it took us years at Salesforce to get this right. And, you know, we've done a number of these here and it's su super exciting question. Like in terms of the peer reviews? Yeah, so my belief, my, so the question is, so, so is it open, right? And, and, and open, there's a number of levels, right? Level number one, can everybody score each other? Level number two, do you make the videos visible and available to folks? Some people are like, well, we should hide the videos so they actually do their own. I'm a believer in open. There's a concept called community accelerated learning, right? Let's just get them out there. Let's everyone watch each other. If I watch Steve's and then I record mine and I get better because of it, like, wouldn't you want me to watch Steve's? The idea of the reviews, it depends on what the specific goals are of the learning outcomes that you're trying to accomplish. For elevator pitches, you know, keeping it open. But you've, I think it depends. I've seen both work. You know, if you want to hold product marketing and a series of official reviewers on the hook to do the official scoring. We've seen that. And then you still want to give the social aspect where I can still go, Steve, great job, and just take the scoring out. So you can do, you can do either. The one thing we did experiment with was anonymous, and we did not see an increase in reviews with anonymity, and uh, contrary to what people would think. And again, we got a pool of about, you know, we're about 15,000 people. We've done about 25, 30,000 uh, videos uploaded in the last 12 months. So we're uh, a significant sample of, uh, of, of, of uh, content and process. And, and then when you know people are going to look at it, you, you actually try to get it right. And so you, you practice more before you publish. And, um, and then when we had some, we had people redo them sometimes. And because and during account reviews, for example, like that Ignite 50 program, you, we also realized that do we have the right reps working on the right accounts based on how they position it? And so we, we actually learned quite a bit about it. You know, there's some folks that, you know, want to be able to send it to the manager first. You know, can you just read it? Can you just watch it before? And that's okay, right? That's, you know, but, you know, if you want to, like, that's just workflow rules that you can do. Did we answer your question? Yeah. Great. What's your name, by the way? Matt. Matt, where are you from? From Las Vegas. Yes, I could tell the Las Vegas accent. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you so much for, for your question. Question over here. Saleshood? So we, start, we founded the company three years ago. Oh, so we, we've been using This is 12 months. More. So yeah. we started January 20. Actually, so, so February 2nd, uh, 20, 
15. So, yeah, what, what, what month are we now? I keep forgetting. Year and a half. Right. So, so we, we, there's different use cases for it. So we could use it for a use case around a product launch. We can use it. Like right now, we're getting into our, our fiscal year just ended. So we're getting back into the account reviews and the QBRs again. So we're going to enforce that, take our findings from the last one, and we're going to change it. And um, we were coming out with some, some new positioning. You saw some of the products today. And we're going to continue to drive it through that. And so it's, it's, you, you just continue to modify it and, and, and change it. And, and uh, when, when the, the, the comment I'll make is it takes vision from the top. It takes a strategy. It takes themes. Like I would start thinking about your year, either in monthly or quarterly themes, and then start thinking about your time period. Like we should do some kind of messaging certification once a quarter. You know, there should be some kind of sales process. You know, kind of team team get together. Now, for example, if you wanted to roll out a skills based training, then you would you know you would pull folks together, and then you could do some some reinforcement. And the other reinforcement that's going to happen is all the reinforcement post the kickoff event that you guys just ran. But what other things have you talked about with Dave in terms of reinforcing some things? So sometimes it's individually. Sometimes it might be a certain person that you've been in meetings with, and then you'll you'll have them kind of go back and do it. And, and first line manager, and it's it's. You, but you have to do it too. So, so I'll do it and I'll present it and we'll go out there. When I go to, I'm in San Francisco. I stop by Eli's place and we'll do certain reviews and publish them out. And and so a lot of the people look to you because if you don't do it, then are they going to do it? Are you just going to be the one grading them and dictating it, or are you going to also be the one who's doing it as well and and getting feedback? What were you thinking with your question? Do we do we get it? It needs to be value add to that person, and it needs to map to your specific go to market strategy. And you know, you got yeah, a calendar, quarterly with a theme. You know, and and you know what? It's Q1, and everybody should be recording a five minute territory plan. You know, we did that together yeah. also last year. Uh, everybody should be sharing their prospecting email templates. Everybody should be brushing up your elevator pitch. You know, when you get midway through the year and you're working on bringing a lot of the deals across the finish line, you know, maybe you should be focusing on some of your mutual close plan kind of presentation. So you can think about the things that are most important to you in the year and then just make it fun, brand it, theme it. But hold people accountable, but in a good way. This is, this is listen, this is always, it is top down. However, once you, it's that moment when you're recording your pitch, you realize that it's actually for your good. Yeah. One other thing I'd add is, yeah. and I'll just, one point on that. So like emails, like how to write a right email. And we have a video on that. And, and actually Eli is the one who kind of explains it, like key points, key words, key sentences, how to do it. Like that's one where reps just keep going back to to remind themselves. But they, they, when you guys did it, I remember the, the you know, a team of eight, each one shared I, somewhere between four and six email templates in a two-week period that they kept on tweaking and tweaking, and they kept coming back. You're watching each other, giving each other feedback. So it wasn't just like do it once and you're done. There was a, there was so there's got to be rich content, and it, content is king, right? But the richest content comes from people that are actually doing it. So there's a balance. So there's a, you know we can go deeper and deeper on it. I know there are more questions. Are we good? It was uh, so in in the positioning. It was on point. Like today, there's key points that we wanted to make sure that people brought up. And so what they would do is they'd watch mixed presentation first, and they'd watch Jim's, and then they do their own. And there were some key things that we didn't tell them we were looking for, and we wanted to make sure that they brought them up. Um, so so that was that was important. And then but there, but metrics right now. So did you have the, the qualitative to get that right side? Sure. Yeah. For the for the yeah, so like pipeline. So listen, it was time. So so time. So so my conversations early on, and what we've been measuring, and how we've been benchmarking, and how we're basically, you know, continuing to. I'm going to use the word justify the continued use of this in the business, specifically on its time to first deal and time to quota, or the two onboarding metrics that have been materially moved. It's se the amount of self-sourced. AE generated pipeline. Those are specific, and then it's quota attainment. It, it actually, I didn't think of it that way, but it's it's getting real deals too. 
like everyone puts deals in the funnel, but it's when you knew they were real and you look back and you can kind of look back on the emails that were sent and it, it was it was yeah. funnel accuracy. It was getting the right fish on the hook. Hey. So what's the science behind 30 days? Yeah. Well, it depends on the sales cycle. And so, you know, when we were at Salesforce, we would we, for the enterprise, it was a longer. And for the SMB, it was about two weeks. So you find the right rhythm. And, and uh, you know, that actually this, the enterprise reps, uh, they went through the content quickly. And then the actual experience of then reviewing it and reinforcing it lasted about six weeks. But that's, that's you know, I think there, there is a scientific answer that is mapped to the average amount of time it takes you to close your deals. That's going to vary by role. So, so depending on your go-to-market, you know, you're going to want to start. Like, I don't know if I can say there's a science to the value of getting a salesperson to feel confident earlier on. Um, but that's a good question. I don't know if anyone has a comment. Anything? Science on 30 days. Like we, so, before, so how would you answer science on 30 days? It, to me, that, that we, we chose, listen, we, we all lived 30, 60, 90, and then, and then we decided we wanted to go faster, and, and really it became you know, less science versus let's just hold folks accountable to some metrics earlier. And that was like, you know, let's generate pipeline in a, in a much faster time period and let's get points on the board faster and, uh, and just build that cadence in a, in a faster period. But it's a, it's a direct connection to the actual average deal size. So, so whatever that is. We look at, you know, other folks that I work with. If you, if you go back to some of these other companies, uh, they have, you know, they figured out the average, day, the average sales cycle. So, for example, one company has an 84-day average sales cycle. It takes to close the first deal. So what they do is they've started building out their onboarding to map to their average. So maybe there's a little bit more of a scientific answer. So it should map to how long. And it depends, right? Like if he's trying to get his guys to just close a deal and it's a clo close a 50K or whatever. The, I don't want to say the numbers, but close, close, a, close a smaller deal just to set confidence. Well, we, we know when we get to a certain point in our sales cycle that um, we're close. And so our, our objective was we got to get more of those. We know if we get go closer, these, get closer. Like it gets like a real deal. Like you know when you have a real deal or not, and it helps you, kind of by writing that right email or by, um, you know, get someone interested. And then there's certain things through the process we know. So our, our goal was we got to get to those. We, have, we need more of what we call strategic value assessments. There's 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 also uh, only so much time, right? So you know what I've seen over the years. Once you get into greater than 15 hours of actual learning time in a week you kind of it's too much already so you front end it and then you're and you're and then you're back ending it um and um yeah there's a whole there's a whole deeper layer here around call shadowing that we even talked about but uh that makes it actually be longer but there was a question here Well, when we were told earlier in the year we're hiring all these people, but we can never get everybody together, 
um, it saved a lot of budget because we just we we could never get our teams together. It was just we were just moving really fast our first 12 months. So we we used this to actually um, augment a lot of travel expense, and uh, and it so it significantly helped with that. But it also forms a sense of collaborative and, and just closeness between the team. I mean, because my team is everywhere around in different states and. And people, they got to know each other a little bit better and it was more personalized. And, you know, you'd love to get everyone together because it's important, but we just weren't able to. It, it gets as close to creating a hub for a distributed workforce yeah. when you're doing something like, like, like this is what I've heard from several people. There was a question here. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let the inside sales folks answer that. And the question is, are you are you so say it again? Are you? So, you know, you're talking about marketing. So I'm wondering if you tie it into like live calls and then also like sources of inspiration. So, so I've seen on the on the SMB and on the mid market. I know that Steve has done a lot of work, kind of pulling in some live calls and then using and scoring. So you basically just pull in an MP4 and MP3 okay. file and then just use that instead of a pitch and start scoring and getting feedback on that. So absolutely. No, no, no. I no. You, you know who's on the call. Anonymity, I mean that I'm going to go log in without my name, and I'm going to give you a score. Okay. I'm going to say, Steve, that was just terrible, right. but I'm not going to tell you who I am. Okay. I I like <laughs> That's what I mean by anonymity. Um, so hold on. There was a question in the back, and then thank you. Good? Yeah. Right. So, so I'm going to share a specific inside sales use case, which is, uh, you know, there some billing terms were changed, and so a communication went out from the COO with a quick three-minute video of the, the changes to the billings with a specific question to make sure folks uh, were, were uh, understood it. Pick a deal and explain how you're going to communicate it. That went out, and there was compliance. So that was a communication that went out, that went out through, through the tool, and that everybody uh, watched. And, and the important thing was the COO, Lindsay, knew that everyone watched it. And that was important. Now, on the, on the flip side, there are a lot of companies that we work with that will use video-based communications. I don't want to necessarily talk about sales. They use sales for it, but let's just talk generically because I don't want this to be all about sales. It's not fair. Uh, they, they, they would use it for, you know, CROs and CMOs would do, you know, monthly, weekly kind of like goal setting. Like, okay, actually, I will give you an example. Um, you know, DocuSign, their CRO, what they did was, uh, right before their kickoff, they asked everyone a question. Imagine what you could do in 2016. You know, and he went on to talk about 2016 goals. Really, really powerful, you know, kind of quick, two-minute, like, really energized. Push it out to everyone and then asked everyone a question. Now, what are you going to do in 2016? What are your 2016 goals? You know, within a week. 500 people came back and recorded their answers. So that's an interesting, innovative way to use video bi-directionally, give people a small challenge. And you're not certifying them, but you're just asking them a question. And, and it's insane the, 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 the way that they were. And then you know. <laughs> well, a real-life example is what we're talking about doing now. Like We're rolling out this um, account-based marketing program. And, and we, what we should do is we should, you should do a video instead of come just present to my team, put it on sales hood, have everyone have action items so when they come to the call, we've got all the action items in place. So we're actually in that hour call instead of you presenting to everyone on the same page, we're forcing everyone here to look at it, watch it, comment on it, have specific action items so we can now use that to execute. 
Like that could be a use case that we could hear very easily, but we should actually we should do it. So I want to I want to just finish and say, so saleshood is it, it's great, right? You know, I, I clearly it's great. I built it. It's awesome. I love it. And, and <laughs> it's, however, you know, it doesn't replace the importance of great managers, right? It, you need great managers. You need vision and strategy. And, and there are other tools as well. Like at, at Inside, Susan's in the back, and she's also working with other really cool, innovative uh, learning management systems. So. There is no one solution that's going to solve all your problems. And I just wanted to just stress that, that, you know, there are specific things you're going to alignment, onboarding, you know, kind of collaborative deal reviews. Awesome. You know, like a nice kind of, but then there's other things you're going to want to do to check knowledge and just, you know, growing revenue is an important, important challenge for companies and, and, you know, over invest. Right and, and be creative and then figure out what works and some things might work for one segment you know distributed workforces versus hubs and it's okay you just keep working through it uh, I don't know I guess that's it for now I think we're that's it for time right we're getting the nod so Steve awesome working with you I'm gonna shake your hand Absolutely. give you a big bro hug and uh, just uh, the whole Inside Sales team congratulations on a great event and a great year and uh, thank you everyone and I'm around. Whoever wants to come up, I do have a few copies of my book here. I'm happy to give it to you uh, as uh, just a token. And uh, that's it for now.